Hi everybody, welcome to my channel. Today we have an art journal tutorial and we're going back to the basics. Most of this video is in real time and I'll be giving lots of ideas. So I'm starting to break the page with this number stamp from Chow Bella. This is a good basic stamp set and I'm putting it on to the block and I'm going to use not ink but a black acrylic paint. I like this because it gives a little bit of texture to the page. I just take the Ranger two and a half inch brayer and brayer it on and then I can stamp with it. Now a number stamp is a good stamp, a good basic it's going to add detail to the background. You're not really going to tell that they're numbers. That's not the point. But I love this collection from Child Bella. Now my page here is a 7 by 10 Canson Mixed Media page that I've taken off the coil so I can work flat. I've gessoed it. Now I'm going to stencil some more black with this Tile Mania stencil. This is another good basic one to have. Look at the detailing this gives. So we are simply breaking the page with black. We are going to put color over top of this, which will push back this somewhat. But this is a great way of adding interest to your background very simply. When you're using acrylic paint with through a stencil, I'm using a makeup sponge and I'm stamping off in between so my the paint isn't globby and wet. That'll prevent it from seeping under. At this stage, it really doesn't matter though if it seeps up under too much because this is the first layer. This stencil is called Garden Gate, also by TCW, the Crafter's Workshop. And I'm adding this one. This one has a little bit more black. So you can see the three elements that we've added have less or more degrees of black and white. That's going to add contrast, and that's what we want on the page. and you want different sizes. Now the napkin that I'm going to end up using as the focal image, as well as these stencils and stamp, are all available at ninniesnapkins.com. There's a link and a coupon code in the description box. This little book, I've kept track of some color schemes. I take the colors, I blend them to see what I get if I mix them, and this is the one I'm flipping through this book and I'm going to use this one. If I take the brilliant yellow and orange, I get this yellow orange. If I take the deep violet and the orange, I get this rosy color. If I take the yellow and the deep violet, I get a color that I'm not really fond of. So I'm going to make sure that my purple, my deep violet, and the yellow are on the far end so I'm not really blending them. And I'm laying it down on my page in the order so I can remember what not to do. So now I'm just going to put a little bit of the paint onto my palette. And I'm just using, this is the top of a lettuce container. So use and recycle, reuse the things that you have. Once it gets too dirty and filthy after I can't clean it, I'll just grab another one. So I'm going to apply paint in a block and blend kind of technique where, and on this one I'm kind of doing in paths. So instead of blocks all over, I'm going to have the deep violet and then I'm going to mix the orange with the deep violet. That's going to make that rosy tone. And I'm just blending. Now, it's uneven at this stage, and that's okay, because we are going to add more stenciling or stamping and focal image on top. And I like, actually, the variations that we get. Now, I'm going back over the deep violet to darken it after it dries. 
right now and I suggest if you're just learning stick to acrylic paint the reason being is it's permanent when dry things that reactivate can cause you some grief and while you're learning that might be problematic once you've learned a few things absolutely go have fun with some of those other products they're really fun so here I'm adding the yellow in and then I'm going over that middle area to get that extra tone so even though I've used only three colors I have multiple shades across my page so this three color combo is a really a winning color combo now the makeup sponges I spray with my Murphy's oil soap mixture and I wash them out and I reuse them again and again in between layers you're going to want to make sure you dry so now I want to add more stenciling and I'm done with the black but I'm going to add some stenciling with white here I'm using white gesso. You can use white acrylic paint. The paint may be more opaque, which means it's going to block out more of the color underneath. The gesso is less opaque, so you can see different shades. And I'm not trying to make it all strictly white. I like that variation. That always adds interest to your page. Now with gesso, many gessos are thinner than the medium bodied acrylic paints. So you're going to have to make sure that you don't have it wet and sloppy on the makeup sponge because you don't want it to seep under. This is more of a top layer than before. So you want to be a little bit more precise. And you can see how having use the same stencil makes this page very cohesive we've got it in the black underneath and now we have it on the white try picking one or two stencils and using them with different colors in stenciling instead of having four or five different stencils it tends to clutter the page so here I'm using the brayer with white acrylic paint on this elegant script stamp from darkroom door this is another great basic everything I'm using here would be a great stash builder you'll get lots of use out of them I know because I have now remember I said use acrylic paint because once it's dry it's permanent I made a mistake here or got messy I could take a baby wipe or damp cloth wipe it off and reapply it and improve it if I, that was watercolor or something that was water activated, I wouldn't be able to do that. So let's look at focal images. Napkins make great sources of focal image. This one is potpourri bell jar. And I've cut out the image from the napkin to addition them on the page. That one had a lot of the same color tone, so that one would have worked. This one, I believe, is called Little Ducks and all of these are from Ninny's napkins. I love how the yellow of the duck matches the yellow that I have on there. This one has a heart in the middle and if I water cut that out I'm going to see the red color underneath. There's no blue on the page but I can paint this out if I wanted to. And then I have this panda napkin. And once again, I've taken it and I've cut them out. That allows me to see it not as a napkin with all the background and everything, but it, and it also allows me to manipulate it on the page and audition it to see. Now, as soon as I put this here, I love the bright colors above and the black and white of the panda. They just really was striking. But any one of those napkins would have worked and this background, trust me, the colors are going to work for a multitude of focal images. So go through what you have and audition them and pick the one that works best for you. So I've taken off the two excess plies off the napkin and now I'm going to glue it down onto copy paper. 
The reason for this is if I just glued the napkin down, all that bright color that's in the background is going to come through the napkin because the napkin goes translucent and you're going to see it, especially on the panda's head, which is white. It's also going to dull the colors. By gluing it on the copy paper, you're putting a opaque white color. It's going to keep the colors of the napkin pure and allow you to use this napkin on top of a colorful, busy background without seeing the background coming through it. So I'm using Fluid Matte Medium. You can use Decoupage or Mod Podge if that's what you have. Be gentle, the napkin gets very fragile when wet. And start in the middle and brush out and get out as many wrinkles. Now I'm gonna let that dry and glue down another one of the pandas. Now I cut them out off camera and I've positioned them, lost a little bit of footage there where I glued the three, the grouping of three pandas on, but I'm gonna glue this one down and what I'm using here is gel medium. Now it's matte finish, just like my fluid medium, but gel medium tends to work better if you've got thicker papers. You can use fluid matte medium here, you can use them interchangeably, but if you have both of them, there are better times to use them. And I'm just going to cut off the excess, but you wanna wait till it dries or you'll just end up ripping the paper. Now this, don't throw it away, this will work perfect on a mini composition book or an ATC, so it's just going in my stash pile. Now there are a couple places on here where there was some foliage that I really didn't want there, so I'm just taking some white gesso and painting over it and making it disappear. I decided to go with the sentiment, embrace pandemonium. And I printed it out, playing with my fonts in two different fonts. I'm going to audition them to see which one I like best. This is a fun font, and I thought it would work well with the black and white. Now there, there's just way too much white, and it's really, hiding that background and I don't want to hide so much of it. So I'm cutting a lot of that white off. Here I'm getting closer and I'm what I call bubble cutting it. This tends to get rid of a little bit more of the white. And there we have it. Now, once I did that, I realized even though I like that font, it's a little too busy. So I'm gonna cut out the other one and use it. Now you can resize these to fit your page. And at first I thought this was a little too big, so I had printed it out smaller and then I thought I can mix and match and have one bigger, one smaller but I ended up going with the same size for both parts of this phrase. And I picked a font here that is really bold. Again, we've got that black and white of the panda bears, and we also have black and white stamping and stenciling in our background. That makes for a very unified and cohesive page. I'm using fluid matte medium to glue this down. It's just copy paper, but again, gel medium could work, but I highly recommend the matte finish. You don't want shine where you don't want shine. And I'm just brushing underneath and over top. I put it in place, I lift up half, glue it down, and then glue the other half down. Now I'm going to do some of the finishing. And finishing means I'm going to edge the page. Here I'm using my shading technique to edge the page. 
and I'm using my angle brush. This is a great technique using a black acrylic paint and I'll put a link to the video where I teach this technique. If you don't know how to do this, you can use your Stabilo All pencil, you can use a charcoal pencil to get that black edging around. That really sets off the page. And I'm giving it a dry and I might come back and add more. Now I want to shade around the panda bear and I'm shading on the actual page, not on the bear. And I'm adding that shading. This is going to make the it look a little bit more 3D. It's going to make it look like it is part of the background. And after drawing it, I do come back and add a second or third. It goes on fairly light and you can always add more. Go little by little. Now I'm grabbing my black Posca pen which is perfect for writing over top of acrylic paint. I'm going to rip off the tape that keeps a straight edge along the top, keeps my coils, all the paint and everything out of the coils. Now I'm outlining sketchily around my page, again, which adds to the framing of it. Now I'm grabbing my white Posca pen. I'm giving it a good shake so that I get the full pigmentation. And I'm just adding dots on top of the black line that I added. Adding black and white to a page is a really good technique. It adds contrast and works, as you can see on this page. This page from beginning to end took less than an hour. It's quick, it's easy, and anyone can do it. Don't have the panda napkin? I'm sure you have a focal image that will work on this colorful background. Check out Nitty's napkins for all the supplies that you see me using here. Follow me on Instagram. Join my Facebook group. And embrace the pandemonium. Now, I've referred, when I layered the one napkin on top of the other, I just decided I'm going to add some shading in here. And that's just going to make it stand out so it looks just a little better. This is me being really particular. As you create more, you will get more and more comfortable about where to add shading. Thank you so much for joining me. I hope you give something in this video a try. If you do, come join my Facebook group and let me know all about it. Bye for now.